uh, I would recommend that you begin calling. I'd like to compliment those of you that uh, were on last night. We had 15 telephone calls, and of the 15 telephone calls, uh, we had a wide variety of problems, and it was an excellent night. So I would encourage you to call, and we'll do as well last night as we did tonight. We'll do as well tonight as we did last night. So uh, get your telephone calls in, and let's get underway. We uh, have Mr. Stewart and Mrs. Croft uh, and Mrs. Nichols, again, uh, very fine teachers to help you uh, with your program. Our concept tonight will be presented by Mr. Stewart, and we have a student to help him, um, Darren Cook. We appreciate very much Darren taking the time to come in and uh, help uh, Mr. Stewart with this problem. So um, start calling and let's help you with your mathematics. We'll be on for the full hour and we're ready to get underway. So we'll get the camera in position. And uh, Mrs. Nichols has the first problem and we'll go right to uh, Mrs. Nichols with the first problem. Thank you. I'm gonna do a percentage problem uh, dealing with interest, a uh, simple interest. And the problem says, find the interest charge for borrowing $400 for four years if the rate of interest is 9% per year. That means we, ha we, have, we do have a formula, and it's a simple interest formula, and that formula is I is equal to P times R times T. Okay, now let's examine, once again, what uh, information is given to us. It says we're going to borrow $400. So that's our principal. So in place of the principal, we're going to substitute 400. Okay, and they tell us it's for four years. So the time is going to be four because in the simple interest formula, the time is in terms of years. Okay, and then it says if the rate of interest is 9% per year, so we know what the rate is. However, we have to change the rate from percent to a decimal or a fraction. So 9% will be equal to 0 0.09. So we're going to put 0 0.09 in our formula. So now we have everything that we need to solve for the interest. So all we have to do is perform the multiplication. So I is equal to, we're going to take the first two numbers, 400 times 900. 9 times, and that's going to be 0, 0. 9 times 4 is 36. We have two decimal places, so it's just 36 decimal, 0, 0 times 4. So I is equal to 4 times 36, which is 4 times 6 is 24, carry the 2, 4 times 3 is 12, plus the 2 is 14. So it's going to be $144 interest charged on a principal of $400 for four years. Okay, we now have Mrs. Croft ready with some, it looks like some area problems involving triangles. Thank you, Mrs. Nichols. Yes, these are area problems for Sherry. Is she with us? Um... Well, Sherry gave us three triangles to find the area of, and, they're, and they all have slightly different um, little uh, tricks about them, but they follow a basic pattern. You know that when we want to find the area of a triangle, you're going to multiply one half or take a half of the base times the height. Well, Sherry, what's the base of this triangle? What's the length of it? Can you see, Sherry, this, tri this first triangle? Can you this is the right problem. Oh, it's not. Okay. Um, well, let's pretend it is, Sherry. <laughs> Since we've got them up here, I think that somebody out there will probably be helped by doing these problems. Um, the base is 20 here, and the height is 13, so the area is going to be half of the base, which is 20, times the height, which is 13. Sherry, do you know how to uh, cross-cancel when we're simplifying multiplication problems? Yeah. Oh. OK. Uh, apparently, Sherry, you're a different Sherry. Um, we'll get you back in just a minute when uh, Mr. Stewart's ready to help you with your problem. You can hang up now. OK. Thank you. Apparently, we have more than one Sherry on our list of phone numbers, and, uh, and uh, that Sherry is going to be helped by Mr. Stewart in just a moment, and our Sherry will be with us in just a moment. Well, 
the way we can simplify this multiplication problem is we've got a 2 in the denominator here, and we can divide the, the 20 here in the numerator by 2 and get 10. 10 times 13 is 130 square units. I believe we have the right Sherry with us this time. Sherry, we finished the first triangle. I hope you were able to jot that down while we were getting you on the phone. Help me with this next one. Our formula says we're going to take a half of the base. What is the length of the base in this second problem, Sherry? Um, 2.5. Well, our, okay, our base here oh, is okay. two. 2. Great. And now our height is? 2.5. Right, because it's the vertical distance, the perpendicular vertical distance here. And that's 2.5. Can you see any way we can simplify this problem before we do the multiplication, Sherry? I don't know. Well, we have a half times two. What's two times a half? Two times half. Uh-huh. What are two halves? One. Uh, right. So we can divide out these twos here, and we just have one. Now, one times one times 2.5 will give us? 2.5. Great. 2.5, and we'll put square units. I didn't see a particular unit of measure that they used in this one. Okay, and the last one, Sherry. What's the trick to this one? One half times. Great. One half times. The um, height. Okay. Yeah. The, the height is? 30. 30. Great. You can see that they just turned it upside down on you this time, didn't they? Mm -hmm. So our base length is going to be? 17. Great. It's going to be 17. So here's our base. Here's our height. It's just kind of flipped over from where you had the height here and the base there the base here, the height here. Now we have the base at 17. Okay, let's re cross reduce some here. 2 and the 30. Great. How many times? 15. Great. And 15 times 17? Is 255. Well, beautiful. Great. 255 square units. Thanks for your patience, Sherry. We really appreciate a chance to help you with these area problems. Okay. Please be sure and call us again if you need some help. Just a quick review on finding the area of triangles. The formula is one-half the base times the height. Now, as you've seen in these problems, the base isn't always necessarily on the bottom. In this case, the base was on the top. But what we're looking for is um, two perpendicular measurements. The height will be perpendicular to the base. So in this case, the base was this top, and of course the height is this perpendicular uh, distance from the altitude of the triangle to the base as it was here. And here you'll notice we started out with a triangle that was kind of at a, uh, had an obtuse angle here. That meant that the, that the bay or the height was dropped outside the triangle. But we want the perpendicular distance here between the top of our triangle and its base. Um, I believe that Sherry's problem is up next with uh, Mr. Stewart. Yes, uh, quite coincidental that we had two Sherry's call with the first two calls tonight, so we apologize to you, Sherry, for thinking you were Sherry. But we know that really you're Sherry, so we'll go ahead now with your problem. And let me read it for you. Are you ready, Sherry? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sherry's a fifth grader, and this uh, problem says, in his experiment, Irv Sloan let the temperature rise from 27 degrees Celsius to 122 degrees Celsius. How many degrees did the temperature rise? Okay, do you know what we're going to have to do to solve this problem, Sherry? Well, I think we subtract. Okay, we're given two temperatures, right? What did it start out at? Do you remember? Um, 27 degrees Celsius. Okay, and it went up to, what was the number? 122 degrees. Okay, in this case, we can put the starting temperature on the bottom and the, the temperature that it ended up with on the top and just go ahead and subtract those two numbers, and that will give us the amount that the temperature rose. Okay, can you help me subtract here? Yeah. What do we need to do? Well, you can't take 7 away from 2, so you have to make the 2 a 12. Uh, no, you have to t take 1 away from 2. Okay, take 1 away from this 2. This is in the tens position, so we're actually borrowing one ten, and we're going to add ten ones to this one, which is why we put a one in front of the two. So we have twelve ones now. And, and twelve minus seven, Sherry, is? Um, five. 
okay? And now over here we have the same thing. It, we actually have one in the tens position and we want to take away two from it, so we're going to have to slide this one over there. I don't know whether you, do you borrow here or do you just look at it and see it as 11? Well, we, I know it either way. Okay. Would, well, let's just go ahead and leave it this way. We know we've got a one here and a one here, so we've got 11 minus two, which is? Nine. Okay, good. So the, the rise in the temperature was 97 degrees, and that, of course, stays Celsius. So if it went from 27 up to 122, it jumped 95 degrees. Okay, thank you, Sherry. We appreciate your call, and uh, we're sorry we got mixed up, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we'll go now to Mrs. Nichols with our next problem. Thank you. Richard, are you on the line? Yes. Okay, so you wanted uh, the brain teaser on the bottom of page 275 solved for you, right? Mm hmm Okay, now they're talking about coins on that, uh, in the, on that page, but uh, uh, blue and red coins, I believe, or items or something. So I just used letters. B to stand for the, two, the three blue ones and R to stand for the two red ones. And they give us the order like this to begin with. And then we need to change it so that it ends up like this. And we are allowed to move two coins at a time. And we have to do it in three moves. We want to change it from this order to this order. We have to move two coins or two letters at a time. And uh, we have to use three moves, OK? So the, the way I, now there might be more than one way of doing it. I don't know. But this is the way that I figured it. I took these two and moved them over here so that we have R, B, this one right here, and then B, R, B. OK? Then I take these two and move them this way over here, okay, so that okay. we have the, the two B's over here, then the B and the R and this R here, okay? okay. Then, let's see, then I took, okay, now we have all the three, all three blues together and all three red, uh, or all two red together, but we want them in the other order, so I can take these two and move them over here. So we have blue, blue, blue red, red. Okay, and that's, that's what we want. This right here just takes us right up to that order. So, now there might be more than one way of doing these. I don't know. But this is the way uh, that I would approach it. Simply because that's the answer they gave in the book. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, do you have any other questions? Do, did you try to do it any other way and it didn't work, Richard? Mm -mm. No, I did it. It wasn't working. It wasn't it. working. Okay, but you have to use, move two at a time, and they have to be side, side by side, and you move them together. Uh, and that's the trick. Now, some, I know some people try to take two of them like this and move them, you know, together or something like that, but you, they have to be side by side and move simultaneously together. Okay, thanks, Richard, for calling. I hope okay. that helps. Okay. Mrs. Croft is getting ready for another problem here in a few seconds. Uh, you can't hear me because I'm not wearing my microphone. Okay, Bun? Yeah. Great. Okay. We're all together here, aren't we? Okay. We need to write um, the standard equation for a line given the... the uh, that a point on the line is negative 2, 3, and the slope is equal to negative 2. Okay? Now, Bun, what do you remember about, um, about equations for a line? Um, I don't know. Well, if we know a point on the line and we know the slope, uh, there's, there's a couple different ways of doing this, and I took a quick look in your book, and... Uh, I believe what they want you to do is take the slope-intercept form, which is y, y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Well, we already know the slope of our line, right? Yeah. And we know a point on the line. That means that this point, this x can go here, this y can go here, and uh, because this point must satisfy this equation of the line, right? Uh -huh. Okay, and then we can solve for b and find out what our y-intercept is. So we'll put 3 in here for y, and it equals, what's our slope? Um, negative 2. Great, negative 2 times, and what's one of our x's that we know of? 
negative 2. Great. So, we, so you see we put the point in here. here for The x-coordinate went in here for x. Y-coordinate went here for y. The slope went right here where we can see that our slope is supposed to go. And now we don't know what b is. But we know everything else but except b, so we can solve this equation for b. So we'll have 3 equals negative 2 times negative 2 will be? Um, 4. Great. Plus b. Now to solve for b, we need to? Um, have to get b alone. Oh, we subtract 4. Great. We'll subtract 4 from both sides. That gives us 3 minus 4 is? Um, negative 1. Mm -hmm. So b must equal negative 1. Is that right? Yeah. OK, so now we can go back and take our slope-intercept form again. And this time, we'll leave y in its general form there. We won't plug anything in. We know the slope. That's negative 2. We'll leave x alone this time, too, because now we want an equation in standard form, which includes just x and y. We don't want a specific point. Plus, well, what's, our, what's b? Negative 1. Now, this is slope-intercept form, bun, and we need to get it in standard form. And standard form looks like this. We have some number times x plus some number times y equals some constant, some number on the other side. Where, and a and x need to be integers or whole numbers. They can't be fractions. So if I want to get x and y on the left-hand side bun, what do I need to do to this slope-intercept form? Um, add it. Um, find a common. We don't need a common denominator, but we do need to get this negative 2x over to the other side in front of our y term here. So we're going to add 2x to both sides. That's going to give us 2x plus y equals what's on the other side? Um, negative 1. Great. And that is the standard form, the standard equation of, this, of the line that passes through negative 2, 3 with a slope of negative 2. Okay, um, Bun, you asked for one more problem, and I, um... Oh, you can erase that. I got it down. Okay. Okay. Let's see if we can quickly review these steps we went through again. We start out with the slope-intercept form of the equation. It looks like this. Now, what do we have to do? We know the point 0, 3 is on the line and that the slope equals negative 1 half. OK, bun, well, here's the general form. This is just a formula. But if we want to put, make it uh, in terms of our line, what do we need to do to it? Um, substitute it in. OK, what can I substitute for y? Um, 3. Right, the y-coordinate of our point. What can I put in for m, which means slope? Um, Negative 1 half. Great, negative 1 half. Now, what can I put in here for x? 0. Right, 0. Now I'm going to have plus b. Do I know what b is yet? Um, no. Not yet. We have to solve for that, don't we? Let's simplify your equation. Negative 1 half times 0 is? 0. 0. We don't need to write that. So we already found out that b equals 0, or b equals 3 here, bud. So that wasn't even tough to solve. Now we go back to our equation in slope-intercept form again, and we write it in general form with our slope and our y-intercept. Oh, not b. We know what b is. 3. Now, to get it into standard form, what do we need to do, Bun? Um, find a common denominator. OK, we don't need to find a common denominator, but we do need to get the x term on the same side with the y. Um, Add um, one half x. Great. We're going to add a half an x to both sides. Now we get one half x plus y equals? Um, three. Great. Three. Now, remember what I told you, Bon, back up here? A and B and C have to be integers. So that means I have to get rid of this one half by doing something to my equation. It'll still be an equivalent equation, but it won't have this half here anymore. Do you have any idea what we could do to it? Um, it's a common denominator. OK. Well, we don't want a common denominator, but what we do want to do is multiply by the denominator. Both sides of our equation. 
Yeah. See, see, now when I multiply 2 times a half, well, let me use the distributive property. 2 times, we're going to have 2 times half x plus 2 times y equals 6. Now, what's 2 times a half here? Okay. Um, 1. Yeah, right. It is. It's 1. We, these 2's divide out, so we end up with x plus 2y equals 6. And there, bun, is the standard form of this line that we started out with up here. This is the slope-intercept form. This is the standard form, and the direction said to write it in standard form. So we're finished with that problem, Bun. I hope that that's been a help to you. Good luck with the rest of your homework, and thanks for giving us a chance to help you with it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Stewart is ready with an area problem. Okay, we worked a couple of uh, triangle problems on uh, the air for you today, and I'm going to work a different one. This one is a trapezoid, and we'll show you how to find the area of a trapezoid if you're having problems with those. Now, before I do that, let me remind you once again to give us a call. Uh, if you need help with your homework, we'd be happy to help you. We'd lots rather help you with your questions than to just uh, make some up of our own. But anyway, I'll go ahead and help uh, show you how to do this one and hope that it will be helpful to you. First of all, one of the key things in, in before you find the area is to recognize what kind of a figure we have. And this one is a trapezoid. The definition of a trapezoid is a four-sided figure that has one pair of parallel sides. So you can see in this case, the top and the bottom are parallel to each other. These two sides are not parallel. And the formula for the area of a trapezoid is, it's written in a couple of different forms. One way is one-half times the height times the average, or times the sum of the two bases. Okay, the two bases of a trapezoid are the parallel sides. So we can take this formula, <coughs> excuse me, and plug in the numbers and find out what the area is. So one half we write down since that's part of the formula. The height of this uh, trapezoid is this side right here, the 13. So we can write down times 13. And then we've got A plus B, which again is the two bases, the top and the bottom in this case. And 13, well, is 13 plus 7. Okay, now we can simplify that to be one half times. 13 times 13 plus 7 is 20, so we've got that. Now, whenever you've got <coughs> a fraction, whenever you're multiplying by a half, it's the same thing as dividing by 2. So we can either think of this as 2 into 20, or if we look at it as fractions, we can reduce the fraction by dividing a 2 into this one, which goes once, and also a 2 into this one, which goes 10 times. We've now got it simplified so that we have 10 times 13 times 1 on top, which is, of course, 130. And the denominators of our two fractions are both reduced to 1, so we don't even need to write the denominator since uh, 130 over 1 is the same thing as 130. So the area of this <coughs> trapezoid would be 130 square units. And again, this is the formula that we use, 1 half height times the sum of the bases, and we just plug the numbers in and we get the answer. So uh, these are good problems to help you get used to putting numbers into equations that will be very helpful for you when you get up into algebra and uh, higher math. It looks like Mrs. Nichols is ready with our next problem, so we'll move over to her. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. I'm going to do a problem uh, concerning profit. And the problem is, how much profit did the last Roundup Cafe make if it made, made a profit of 14% on sales of $4,200? Okay, now we have to deal with profit, income, and costs, and the rate. Now we have a little formula that we can substitute in uh, when we have profit over, as, as a ratio, over the total income. Now the total income involves uh, the profit and the costs, okay? T to make a profit, y your income has to be more than your costs, okay? And that's equal to your n over 100, which is also a ratio compared to 100, which is your rate, okay, or your percent. Okay, so if you know the profit and you know your income, you can find your rate. However, in this problem, we know the income, okay, we know the sales, which is $4,200. We don't know the profit, that's what we're trying to find out, so we're trying to find the P there. We know the rate, they want to make a profit of 14%. Okay, so 14 over 100. Now we can use cross uh, products to solve this problem. Okay, so if we multiply here, we're going to have 
uh, P times 100, so that's 100 P is equal to, and we have to multiply the 14 times the 4, 2, 0, 0. Now I can get rid of my 100 here and my two uh, zeros there. So P is going to equal 14 times the 42. So we need to multiply the 14 times our 42 to get our final answer. 4 times 2 is 8, and 4 times 4 is 16. 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 4 is 4, so 8, 8, 5. So $588 profit is what the last Roundup Cafe made on the uh, on income or a total sales of $4,200. They had quite a few costs to set up there. Okay, uh, we would like to encourage you to call in to, uh, to, so that we can help you, 752-1811. Uh, we need to have some more calls so we can do your work for you. Otherwise, we get to choose the problems that we want to do, whether you, want, whether you need them or not. We are ready now for Mr. Stewart and a friend of his, I think. While well, Mr. Stewart is getting underway, we would encourage you to call. Um, on your television set is 700. Those of you that have been watching over the past few days would know that that's the 700th caller. And what we're hoping to do tonight is to give a calculator to the uh, student that calls. And um, I know tonight we'll hit 700. But I'd like for you to call in 752-1811. will put you in the running for a calculator tonight. I think now Mr. Stewart and Darren Cook are ready for the uh, problem. So we'll go back to uh, the board. Thank you. Uh, yeah, before we do our next problem, we're going to have a little fun here. I just noticed uh, one of our Mount Logan Middle School students here. Uh, how you doing, Darren? Pretty good. Where you been? I've been out skiing. Oh, really? Yeah, it's pretty good. Gee, it looks like you got some nice equipment there. Yeah. Uh, I've never been skiing myself. Being from St. George, I've never gotten into the snow much, but it looks like it'd probably be a little bit of fun. Yeah, you'd ought to come out and try it. Yeah, I'll have to. I'll tell you what, uh, being from St. George, I, the, the sport that I'm into is tennis. Uh, have you ever tried tennis, Darren? No, I haven't. You haven't? Man, that's the, that's the fun sport. I think this uh, ski stuff, we better set it aside. I uh, don't know if you realize it or not, but today is the first day of spring, and you can actually see a little bit of the ground out there if you look in the right spots. And, uh, yeah, I guess you can. So uh, I think it is getting tennis season, so I think what we better do, Darren, is uh, get this uh, ski stuff out of the way and get you suited up for some tennis. Okay. Uh, got some bargains right here in our uh, sporting goods store. Look at this, man. Here we've got a, a real fine tennis racket, uh, regularly $62, and we've got quite a bargain here. As you can see, it's 30% off. Uh, why don't pretty you good. get the feel of that and see if you like it? Yeah, it's pretty good. Good. I can tell right. you've got great form. Uh, <laughs> by the way, how much money do you have to uh, spend on your tennis equipment to get you outfitted? Well, I only want to spend about $100 for. Okay, you let's, know. Uh, let's check these prices out and see what we can fit you out with. You want to, you got $100 to spend. We'll, we'll keep that in mind. Uh, as you can see, this is a $62 racket regularly, but uh, for our spring sale, we've got it 30% off. Do you know what that would be, Darren? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, let me show you how to figure out a discount. Uh, the price is $62 and 30% off. There are a couple ways we could do that. Let me show you both ways. One way we can think of it is since, uh, since it's $62 and it's 30% off, we can find out what 30% of this number is and then subtract that from $60. Let's try that first. And one thing I better remind you of, whenever we multiply uh, with money, we need to change percents into decimals. Do you know how to change 30% uh, into a decimal number? Well, it would be either 0 0.30 or 0 0.3. OK. Let's just uh, call it 0 0.3 for, uh, to keep it simple here. Now, let's go ahead and multiply this out and find out what the discount is. 2 times 3 is? 6. And 3 times 6? 18. Okay, and then we need to slide the decimal over one place. And since we're talking money, let's go ahead and put another zero right there. So the discount here is uh, $18.60. So if it started out at $62, we're going to give you an $18.60 discount. Uh, let's figure out what you're going to owe us for this tennis racket. Go ahead and help me with this one, Darren. Okay, zero. Okay. And then you need to borrow and then be four. Okay. 
And then and you need to borrow again. That'll be three and then five. Let's see. Uh, five minus one. We better call that a oh, yeah, four. Four. Sorry. Okay. Uh, we're going to give you a better discount than you would have given yourself here. <laughs> okay, so we can see that uh, what we're going to owe for the tennis racket is $43.40. Let me put that up here. Okay. Uh, all right, now uh, let's just set that right there and see what else we can find for you. Uh, one thing you're going to need, Darren, is a shirt. Uh, we've got just a real fine looking shirt here. And you can see this is one of our brand name shirts. And it's, it's got, normally got a very low price of $19.95, but we're going to give you a 25% discount on top of that. What do you think? Pretty good. Hey, see here. Let's, uh, hold that up to you and see if it looks like, yeah, I think that's the right size. Yeah, let's, uh, belt fits. Let's figure out what you're going to have to pay us for that one. What was the regular price on that? $19.95. Okay. And the discount is? 25%. 25%. Okay, now... Uh, I showed you one way to find discount. Let me show you one more way, Darren. If it's 25% off, then how much are we actually paying for it? What percent of the, the total price are we paying for it? About 75%. That's right. You can just subtract that from 100. So we, we're going to have to pay 75% of that. So we can just multiply this number by 75%, which we changed to a decimal. And that will tell us the actual price. If we do it this way, we won't have to subtract as we did when we found out what the tennis racket would cost. Let's go ahead and multiply this through now. We've got a lot of big numbers here. Hope you can help me out with this. Okay, that's 25. This will give us, okay, 25 and? 45 plus 2 is 47. Great. And 5, 10, 45 plus 4 is 49. Okay, and 1 four. times 5 is? 5. Plus the 4 is? 9. Okay. And uh, let's go through with the 7 now. It's 35. And 7 times 9 is? 63. Plus 3? 66. And 7 times 9 again is? 63. Plus 6 this time is? Six, 69. Right. Okay. And 1 times 7? Seven, 7. Plus 6? 13. Right. Okay, uh, so we add this up and find out what our price is going to be on this. We've got a 5. 12. 12. We carry the 1. That gives us 16. 16. And? 19. 19. 3. And a 4. Carry a 1. So we got a 4 and, and a 1. Now we slide our decimal over four places. Uh, we'll, we'll just cut that uh, fourth of a cent off for you and we'll give it to you for $14.96, okay? Okay. So there's Sounds your good. shirt uh, at $14.96. Okay, now one other very important thing, Darren, if you're going to be a tennis player, is shoes. And you can't just get any old shoes. You've got to have good shoes. Now, right here, we've got a pair. Uh, they've even been broken in, as you can tell. Uh, I broke them in myself, actually. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we're giving you such a bargain. These are regularly $49 shoes. But since I broke them in, we're going to give you a 15% discount. Uh, so let's figure out what you uh, have to pay for those, OK? OK. We've got to keep in mind that you've only got $100. We don't want to break you here. But it is important to have the right equipment. So what's the regular price on that? $49. $49. I tell you, we have good prices here. We really give you bargains. OK, and it's 15% off. 15% off. OK, so it's 15% off. We could either multiply this by 0.15 and then subtract what we get from 49, or we can multiply it by the difference between 15% and 100%, which would be? 85%. OK, so we're actually going to pay 85% of that price for this item. Okay, 5 times 9 is? 45. 4 times 5? 20. Plus 4 is? 24. Good. And 9 times 8? 72. 4 times 8? 32. Plus 7 is? 39. Mm -hmm. Add these up, uh, and it looks like we get 4165. Okay. okay. Let's put that up here for the shoes. And uh, let's go ahead and add this up and see if you got enough money for it, Darren. Let's see. Uh, five and six is? Eleven. Okay. And here we've got? Twenty. Twenty. Uh, what's that going to Ten. Okay. Carrier one. Ten. Ten again. Uh, bring our decimal down. So, it, oh, shoot, Darren, looks like you don't have, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you one 
sand of my own money, okay? So oh, you'll gee, have enough. thanks. That's quite hey, all that, right. That really helps. Good. Okay, so uh, not only are you getting a great bunch of discounts here, but you're also getting a one cent discount just okay. out of the kindness of my heart. That's good. So there you go, Darren. You're outfitted now. Uh, you can take these things and uh, go hit the courts. You might want to get a couple of tennis balls too, but we won't worry about that now. You can pick those up later. So here we go. We've got you outfitted for $100. And I'll tell you what, uh, while you're here, we talked about uh, some different discounts. Let's see if we can uh, refresh our memory as to what we had. We had a $62 pair of shoes, I think, and that was 30% off, was it? That was the tennis racket, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. uh, the tennis racket was $62. We gave it to you for 30% off. And uh, the shirt, what was the price on the shirt? Okay, it was $19.95. Got 25% off. Okay. And then the shoes? $49. $49 pair of shoes, and we gave those to you for 15% off. 15% discount. Okay. Now, you can see we've got three different discounts. I'm wondering, Darren, uh, if these are the regular prices, what would be the overall discount that you received on uh, all these items combined? Do you know what that would be? No, uh, not right now. I um, wonder if maybe some of you out there could give us a hand with that. Uh, we're going to have that as our brain teaser contest tonight so that Darren and I won't have to sit down and figure that out ourselves. Here are the prices. Uh, these are the regular prices. and. Uh, there's the discount price. See if you can figure out what he would have had to pay regularly, compare that to what he actually had to pay, and come up with one discount figure. What percent, what overall percent was the discount that he received on all of these items? So go ahead and see if you can figure that one out for us. And if you get the answer, give us a call, and we'll be happy to send you out with the calculator. So Darren will be ready to play tennis, and you'll be ready to do math. Appreciate Darren coming in. and. Uh, We'll maybe see him later in the program if we get an answer to the brain teaser. So, thank you, Darren. I'll see, I'm going to go get started on my tennis. Okay, sounds good. While Darren's getting underway with their tennis game, we'd encourage those of you out there to call in. Uh, and let's get our 700th call tonight. I'm beginning to question if we're going to make 700. We would like to thank Darren. Uh, we appreciate those students in the middle school that will take their time to come up and be on television with us. It's another way of making the program uh, a little better for the students. So, again, thanks to, the, to Darren. Um, we would encourage you to continue to call. I want to hit 700 tonight so that uh, someone out there can be a winner of a calculator, but you're going to have to call to get it. Now we'll go back to Mrs. Croft. Looks like um, she is ready to go with another problem. Yes, Bud is with me, and he has another uh, question from his Algebra 1 homework. You'll remember that the last problems were uh, we were given a point and the slope on the line, and we needed to write the equation of the line in standard form. Well, this time we're given two points on the line and not the slope, and so we're going to need to find the slope before we can write this equation in standard form. Bun, do you remember how to find the uh, slope of a line if you're given two points? Um, you subtract the y-axis and the x-axis. Okay, we, we subtract the, the y-coordinates. I'm going to do 4 minus, and of course the other coordinate is a minus 2, so I'll have 4 minus a minus 2, difference in the y's over the difference in the x's, 3 minus 0. Now, to simplify that, 4 minus a minus 2 is what, Bun? Um, 6. Great, because that's the same as 4 plus 2. We have 6 over what's 3 minus 0? Um, 3. Great. And now 6 over 3, we can simplify that even further. What is 6 over 3? 2. Great, because 3 goes into 6 twice. So our slope is 2. Now we can go to our slope-intercept form. Remember, that is y equals, well, here's our slope, 2x plus b. Now, we still don't know what B is, but we do know, know an X and a Y. Let's choose the first point. I always, if I have to plug in an X and a Y and solve for something, I always use a point that has a zero in it because it it's just simplifies things even more. So we'll put in negative 2 here for Y. 2 times, well, X is 0 plus B. Now we end up with negative 2 equals 2 times 0 is 
Right, so we just have B left there, so we know that B is negative 2, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now that we know that, we can go back to our slope-intercept form. Let me uh, break in here and interrupt. We've been getting some dollar values for our brain teaser answer. What we want is the percent discount, okay? Not the amount of money that he saved, but the percent discount, the total percent discount in his uh, shopping. So give us a percent, round it off to the nearest whole percent, that's what we're looking for on our answer tonight. Thank you. Thank you. That was certainly an emergency bulletin. We don't want you out there trying to work the brain teaser the wrong way. Bun, now back to your problem. We found out what our y-intercept is. It's negative 2, so we go back to our slope-intercept form of the equation. We have y equals, the slope is 2x. Now we can put in negative 2 for b, right? Yeah. Great. Okay, now remember, standard form is a con or a integer times x plus an integer times y equal to some other constant. So we need to get x on the other side, our x term on the other side, we need to do what? Uh, subtract 2x. Great. We're going to subtract 2x from both sides. That's going to give us a minus 2x plus y equals negative 2. Now, Bun, one other comment on these equations, standard form of the line. Um, oftentimes, and I noticed in your book this is true, oftentimes they don't like you to have a negative sign right in front. So what we need to do is multiply both sides of our equation by a negative 1. And of course, that'll keep our equation equivalent because we're doing it to both sides. But it'll give us a positive 2x minus y equals minus 2 times a minus 1 here is positive 2. And that gets sort of that minus sign that's hanging out in front there. Um, and that's how your book has the answer. They don't like the minus sign in front. Now, Bun, you've been really patient and very helpful during this. I would like to show you another way of doing this that we've done in Algebra 2, but I know uh, you can handle it because you can handle these. And I think it's, a, uh, it's an easier way of working this type of a problem. And that is we know that the slope equals the difference in the y's over the difference in the x's. Well, Bun, if we let this y and this x be a general x and y, which means we're not going to put any numbers in there, we're just going to leave them as x and y like we did right here. We didn't put numbers in here, we just left it as x and y. But if we pick one of our points to put in here for x1 and y1, like the point 0, negative 2, and of course we know what the slope is. The slope is 2, and that equals y minus, well, pick one of our points, and as I told you before, I always like to use a point that has a 0 in it because it makes things easier. So I put negative 2 in here for y, and I put 0 in here for x from this point. Now simplifying, I get 2 equals y well, minus a minus 2 bun is? Plus 2. Great. Plus 2, and x minus 0 is just x. Now, cross-multiply this. Well, that'll give us? Um, I don't get it. 2 times x. We're going to cross-multiply. 2 oh, times yeah, x. Okay. Of course, this is like 1 times this, so we'll have 1 times y plus 2 is still just y plus 2. You're able to get down here on this? Okay. Now, Bun, our next step again. Now, you can see this looks like what we've been working with earlier. Now, remember, we have to have the x and y term together on the same side. So what would be my next step? Um, subtract y. Great. We're going to subtract y from both sides, and that's going to give us, can you get all the way down here? 2x minus y equals 2. Now, Bun, you can see that that's the very same thing the very same equation that we ended up with in both cases, but you can see that this method was much shorter. And that is why I like this method better when you know two points on your line or if you know one point and the slope. We could have used this very same method with those two problems of yours that we did earlier. So if you'd like to make a note of this, I think it's a really simple method compared to the one that your book uses. But uh, this is still a good method. You're going to get the right answer. It's just a few more steps. But I think this will save you some work.
Thanks a million, Bun. We just really appreciate a chance to help you with your algebra. Uh, looks like Mr. Stewart's friend uh, Darren is ready with the answer to the brain teaser. Looks like we got an answer to the brain teaser while I was gone. Okay, I'm going to show you how they got the answer. First of all, they took the regular price, the total, that would have been $130.95. And then they took the discount price, and that would have been $100 and one cent. And the total discount was $30.94. And you take that and divide it by the total price that it would have been, and it comes out 23.6%, 20, round that to 24%. Thank you, Darren, for solving that problem. Uh, it uh, proves that if you know your math, you can save yourself some money. So thanks very much, Darren, um, and Mr. Stewart, for that fine problem. We'll go back now to Mrs. Uh, Nichols, who is ready with another problem. I had to switch mics there. The other one wasn't working. I hope this one is. Okay, I'm going to do some background uh, material on fractions, decimals, and percents that the sixth graders are working on right now. Um, you have to know all this information that I'm going to give in order to do these problems over here. So we're going to change from fractions to decimals and to percents. Okay, so on, for the first one here, we have 12 over 100. Number two, we have a decimal number. It's decimal 71. And for number three, we have a percent, a 66 percent. We have to write each one of these as the other two that we don't have. Now, percent means per hundred. If we have a number that's in percent, we can drop that percent sign and write that as 66 over one, whoops, we want it as a fraction over here, 66 over 100. Now, usually, they want us to reduce these, and they're both even numbers, so that's going to be 33 fiftieths as our fraction. Percent and per hundred are the same thing again, as I said. Now, if you have a fraction over 100, we know that we can write that as decimal 66. Okay, if we have 71 hundredths here in decimal form, we can write that as 71 over 100. We can't reduce here, however, so that's our fraction as it is. So if we have 71 over 100, 100 and percent mean, hundredths and percent mean the same thing, so we have 71 percent here. Okay, we have 12 hundredths. This fraction is not in lowest terms. We can reduce it so that it is in lowest terms by dividing by three. Three into, or four rather. Four into 12 will go three times. 4 into uh, 100 will go 25 times. So this is our common fraction in lowest terms. This is our fraction with a denominator of 100. And if we have a denominator of 100, we know what the percent is. It's 12%. OK, also, if we have a denominator of 100, we can write it in decimal form by using the two places, decimal 1, 2. So we can change any fraction to a percent, any decimal to a percent, and we can go backwards. Any percent can be changed to a decimal. It can also be changed to a fraction. So these are some uh, very common and useful tools that we need to have uh, at, our hand, at our hands, you know, at just at the tips of our fingers, to know in order to work with percents. And you can see that you use it for uh, buying on a, on, a, on a discount if you're on sales or anything like that. You also use it. Uh, I did some problems before on interest, simple interest. And of course, you have uh, more complicated interest problems also. You use percent every day that you buy something because uh, when you buy something, they add tax onto it. And your tax is a percent of the total price of your, uh, the items that you're buying. OK? Um, uh, looks like they're arguing about a problem over there, getting ready to put one up. Meanwhile, uh, click over to something else. 
They're getting ready to put another problem on the board here. Okay, Jeff? Yeah. Well, you have a very interesting story problem. <laughs> we have a fur coat we're going to buy. And the price of that fur coat is $3,600. Do you want to tell me what you're going to do with this fur coat? Um, you're going to pay a, a down payment of 45%. Right, we're going to pay 45% down. So that means that our balance, and I'm going to write that as BAL, our balance is going to be $3,600 minus 45% of $3,600, right? Right. Okay. Now I have my calculator handy here so I can do this real quick. I'm going to use 0.45, as you, Mrs. Nichols just showed you, we can write percentage as a decimal by moving the decimal place two places to the left. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do in my calculator is multiply 0 0.45 times 3,600. And that is $1,620, and I'm going to subtract that from 3,600 to give me, looks like $2,980. This is my balance, okay? Okay. Okay, so after we pay our 45% down, we're still going to owe $2,980. Now, the interest rate um, on, this, uh, on this balance is going to be in our story problem, it says 9.5% per year. So if we write our total interest, then is going to be, well, our balance is $2,980. We're going to need to multiply that times the interest rate, which is 9.5%, times the length of time that we're going to uh, be carrying this balance. And they're going to carry this balance for one and a half years. Okay. Now one thing you need to double check when you're doing this type of problem, Jeff, is that if this is a yearly interest rate, this time, your time here, okay, this is our principal times our rate times our time, this, your interest must be in years and your time must be in years, or this must be in months and this in months. In other words, your length of time, your unit of time has to agree. Well, let's see, what's our total interest going to be then? I'm going to get out my calculator again, and I'm going to multiply 2,980 times. Well, my interest rate is 9.5% or 0 0.95, when we write it as a decimal, times my time, which is 1.5 if we write it as a decimal. And I came up with $424.65. Okay, that is just our interest. Now, the, what we're going to make payments on is our interest and our balance. So here's our interest, here's our balance. Let's add those two things together. And I come up with our balance plus interest equals, well, that $2,980 plus 424.60 er, and 65 cents, that equals 3,404.65 or 65 cents. Now, what do we need to find out? What's the final question that we're asked in our story problem, Jeff? Um, you need to divide that by the time. Great. We need to divide 3,404.65 and 65 cents, we need to divide that by the number of months in order to find out what our monthly payment is going to be because we're going to make equal monthly payments. Well, what's our number of months? Um, it'd be 18 then. One right. One and a half years is 18 months. You had to do a lot of arithmetic in this problem, didn't you? So let's take our balance, divide it by the number of months, Boy, our math helps calculators are really handy for this. And I end up with $189.15 when we round the cents. 
Thanks for your call, Jeff. We okay. really appreciate a chance to help you. Mr. Stewart is Thanks. waiting with another. Okay, we have Bun with us. Are you ready, Bun? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've got these two points. We want to write an equation in standard form uh, from these. So do you know how to proceed here? Um, I'm trying to find the slope. So okay. I just let's, let's use this formula then and find the slope, okay? Yes. Well, okay, first, yeah, what, the slope is going to be the difference in the y's over the difference in the x's, right? Yeah. So let's do that. Uh, so we can write 2 minus a negative 1. That's the difference in the y's over the difference in the x's would be 3 minus 5, okay? Yeah. And that will give us what? Um, 3 and negative 2. Okay, so we've got a slope then of negative <coughs> 3 halves, excuse me. Now, if we go back up to this equation... We can use one of these points, and this looks like the easiest one. We can use one of these points and this slope to put back into that equation to get us started, okay? So uh, let's use y equals 2. And the slope, again, was negative 3 halves. Uh, x is 3. And then we've got plus b. And we're trying to find b now. Uh, what do we need to do now to, to solve for b? Um, times there. Okay. Negative two thirds. And that'll give us negative nine halves, right? Three times three is nine over two plus b. Now we can get rid of that. I think we're about out of time, so let's just hurry through this really fast. If we add nine halves to both sides, uh, we'll get rid of that, and we'll get b is equal to two would be four halves, okay? So let's just change it in, all into halves. That would give us 13 halves. So we found B now. We can go back up to this the, the equation that we want. Uh, let's see. Well, let's put, it, let's put it back into this one, I guess. We've got Y now. Let's, help me out here, Bun. What do we want to do now? Um, reverse that. Which one? Um, B equals. Okay. 13 halves. Do we want to stick it back into this equation or go right to this one? Um, stick it back up to the y equals. Okay, so y equals the slope, which is negative 3 halves. Uh, x plus b that we just found was 13 halves. It's been a while since I did these problems. Okay, now I can see that we need to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of our fraction parts, okay? Let's do that, and we get 2y equals negative 3x plus 13. And now, if we add 3x to both sides, we'll get it back into the form that we wanted, okay? So we have now 3x plus 2y equals 13. So there we have the equation in standard form, and I'm sorry I kind of got lost there in the middle, but I hope you followed that. Any questions? Uh, no. Okay, thanks, Bun. Appreciate your call. Uh, we appreciate all of you who've called tonight, and we'll switch back now to Mr. Peterson. We uh, have reached our 700th caller tonight, and um, Jeff uh, Spencer was our 700th caller. So, Jeff, we appreciate you hanging in there. I began to wonder if we're going to reach it tonight, at least the 700th caller. We'd uh, like to... Um, Thank our teachers, uh, Mr. Stewart, Mrs. Croft, for, and also Mrs. Nichols, for making that fine presentation tonight. We'd also recognize Darren Cook again. He's still here, and we'd say thanks again to Darren. We've had a very good night.